this all begins and it probably ends with the Constitution. Mm -hmm. The Constitution of the Commonwealth of Dominica, preamble, whereas the people of Dominica, A, have affirmed that the Commonwealth of Dominica is founded on the principles that acknowledge the supremacy of God, faith in fundamental human rights and freedoms, the position of the family in a society of free men and free institutions, the dignity of the human person, and the equal and inalienable rights with which all members of the human family are endowed by their creator. B, respect the principles of social justice and therefore believe that the operation of the economic system should result in so distributing the material resources of the community as to subserve the common good that there should be adequate means of livelihood for all, that labor should not be exploited or forced by economic necessity to operate in inhumane conditions, but that there should be opportunity for advancement on the basis of recognition of merit, ability, and integrity. C, have asserted their belief in a democratic society in which all persons may, to the extent of their capacity, play some part in the institutions of the national life and thus develop and maintain due respect for lawfully constituted authority. D, recognize that men and institutions remain free only when freedom is founded upon respect for moral and spiritual values and the rule of law. E, desire that their constitution should make provision for ensuring the protection in the Commonwealth of Dominica of fundamental human rights and freedoms. Now, therefore, the following provision shall have effect as the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Dominica. Mm -hmm. Section 117 reinforces the very important matter that this Constitution is the supreme law of Dominica and subject to the provisions of this constitution. If any other law is inconsistent with this constitution, this constitution shall prevail and the other law shall, to the extent of its inconsistency, be void. Okay, the significance of that for... The significance of that mm -hmm. is the case before the court mm -hmm. was about the qualifying criteria for sitting in the parliament that is set by the constitution. That is section 32.1a. A person shall not be qualified to be elected or appointed as a representative or senator if he is by virtue of his own act under any acknowledgement of allegiance, obedience, or adherence to a foreign power or state. Okay. So that is the Constitution. That's what the Constitution says. That's our supreme law. How did that become an issue? It for... became an issue because in the election of 2009, December 18, 2009, Mr. Senjar and Mr. Skerritt, members of the Labour Party, candidates for the Labour Party in that election, contested the election, nominated, were nominated for the election, and at the time of their nomination, mm -hmm. at the time that they were elected, they were under acknowledgement of allegiance, obedience, adherence to a foreign power or state, namely the state of France, by virtue of the fact that as adults they were in possession of French passports. Okay. That was what was before the court. So that would be a disqualifying factor. That, that's the disqualification. Which means that they should not have been allowed to contest. They should not have been nominated. Mm -hmm. They should have they should been nominated. Have, and okay. They should not have been nominated and they should not have contested the election mm -hmm. because of the qualifying criteria set out in the Constitution at 32.1a. Now what would have been the, 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 the material proof, the material evidence for them to no, have before, been considered? Well, before we go there, yeah. let's pay attention to section 40 of the Constitution as well. Okay which tells us that the High Court, the High Court, shall have jurisdiction to hear and determine any question whether any person 
has been validly elected as a representative or senator. Okay, so, so that's the point We have the supreme authority. law. We have the supreme law. Yeah. We have the qualifying criteria that the supreme law sets. Mm -hmm. And we also have in the supreme law, the constitution, the arrangements that the constitution has put in place for this issue of validity of membership in parliament to be determined where there are questions. Okay. Questions emerged over the validity of the membership, the qualification of Roosevelt Skerritt and Peter St. Jean. Mm -hmm. It went before the court, which is the authority that the constitution has asked to look into this matter. Okay. I, so that, I that, that was that the correct path absolutely. to follow. Okay. In the constitution at section 40, there is an individual in the government who is given an independent role mm -hmm. in this determination of membership validity. Who is that person? That individual is the Attorney General. This matter, matters of this nature can be brought by anybody who is voting and stuff. Any elector. But, but, but apart from that, the Attorney General is given a specific responsibility. But he didn't, he, move, he didn't move in this case. No, no. He can intervene. He can join actions and so on that are, that are intended to determine membership validity. And at section 40, subsection 8, the Constitution tells us that in the exercise of his functions under this section, the Attorney General shall not be subject to the direction or control of any other person or authority. In other words, okay. in the determination of membership validity, which is important to the Constitution and the rule of law, the Constitution is empowering the Attorney General to act independently and in the public interest in that regard. If this is not, not exclusive of the jurisdiction of the court, of course. No. This is in addition to? This is in addition to the jurisdiction okay. of the court. There's an example in our Caribbean region of how an attorney general acts independently. Because now what we see in Dominica is that the attorney general being part of the government team mm -hmm. was in support of Mr. Skerritt's case and Mr. St. Jean's case. Mm -hmm. right? right. Now, you had a situation in Antigua in 2003 where Rupert Sterling the junior minister of information resigned from the Senate and resigned from his ministerial position over a dual citizenship matter. In his letter, Mr. Sterling explained that they, in light of the commencement of legal proceedings for a declaration to determine whether or not his position as a member of the Senate contravenes the provisions of the Constitution of Antigua and Barbuda, he considered it in the best interest of the country that he relinquish his position as a member of the upper house, okay. the Senate. This now becomes most interesting. On the 9th of May, Attorney General, you, you ready for this? Mm -hmm. Mrs. Gertel Tom filed an application in the High Court for a declaration that Rupert Sterling and Linton Thomas of Barbuda were not validly appointed as senators because they hold dual citizenships. Gertel Tom was part of the same government in which Rupert Sterling was serving. She was Attorney General. She was Attorney General and in the government where Rupert Sterling was Junior Minister okay. under Lester Bird. And she went to court for a declaration that Rupert Sterling, the Junior Minister of Information, and senator was not validly appointed as a senator because he held dual citizenship. Mm -hmm. The order called for both men to vacate the seats and further restrain them from sitting or continuing to sit in the Senate. Sterling and Thomas were citizens of the United States of America. Okay. Now in his resignation letter to Prime Minister Byrd, Sterling also said he is firm in his belief that he has not contravened any law by sitting in the upper house of parliament. He said he plans to clearly establish this beyond any doubt by use of the judicial system. He added that he believes that the court is the appropriate forum for such a declaration, but he also recognizes 
that it will take some time. He said that during the period leading up to the matter being heard in the courts, he does not consider it proper for him to be performing the duties of a senator while he's defending the validity of his appointment as a senator. Mm -hmm. He thanked the Prime Minister for the opportunity to have served the country for the past four years. There is two crucial issues here. Now, the lady who filed a declaration in court seeking to have the seat, the Senate seat of Rupert Sterling vacated, would have known that her authority so to do came from the Constitution. Absolutely. And that she was acting independently. Mm -hmm. The same individual, the same person, finds herself now as a judge in the position of the judge in a matter of a, of a citizenship disqualification case in Parliament of Dominica. And uh, she has the responsibility, the, the responsibility now to adjudicate this matter fairly. Oh, there's no and to pay attention, to pay attention mm -hmm. to the constitutional requirements. Mm -hmm. and the public interest, which is what she was doing As back in 2003. Question. There, there's no material difference between the Constitution of Dominica and that of no, Antigua? No, the, the provisions are, the, the the provisions provisions are, are the essentially same. the same. Absolutely. Okay. Now, when we talk about the, 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 the judgment, we, we have to pay some attention to what judges do. They play different roles. They interpret law. They assess evidence that is presented before them. They control how hearings, how trials proceed in their courts. But most important of all, judges are impartial decision makers in the pursuit of justice. Okay. Not in, not in the facilitation of special interests. Mm -hmm. In these matters, they're required to impartially make decisions in the pursuit of justice. And what we have in, in our part of the world is known as an adversarial system of justice. Cases are essentially legal contests between parties on, on either side of an argument. And that ensures that evidence and legal arguments will be presented and presented forcefully. The judge, however, is required to remain above the fray, mm -hmm. is required to provide an independent and impartial assessment of the facts and how the law applies to those facts. Are you, are you and it is in that context I would like to make some observations. You're about suggesting this that week's, them, this week's that judgment. is an issue? That is an issue. It is clearly an issue. Why, why is that an issue in this case? It is an issue because we had a situation where the petitioners made a complaint to the court. Mm -hmm. They brought a complaint that these gentlemen, Mr. Senjar and Mr. Skerritt, were not qualified to contest the election, they were not, they're not qualified to sit in the parliament on account of this disqualification. Dual which citizenship. Is set out. Yeah. It's not a dual citizenship per se, it is the acknowledgement of allegiance, obedience, or adherence to a foreign power state by virtue of their own act, okay. which the Jamaica precedent of Dabdub versus Vaz is established through the possession, the, the possession and use of the passport of the foreign state. Before in you the go case, on, how do you prove that? 